Could you tell us what it is? Uh, it's a picture of my face with um, a note that Johnny left uh, for me by the coffee. Typically, is where we'd leave notes like that. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? It was one of those scenes. I. Um, As embarrassing as it sounds now, I don't know which scene this came from. There was a lot. It escalated quickly, fast, and it was became. Amber, uh, let, let me ask it a different way. I'm thank just. You. Um, is this a picture of you? Is it a, an accurate picture of you? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 1783. Your Honor, we have an objection. May we okay, approach? Sure, sure. Uh, Would you please describe for the jury uh, some of the cycles you had with Mr. Depp through 2012? So in 2012, the violence was pretty, you know, relative to what it became, pretty, you know, slapping, uh, backhanding. Well, it went from, it went from this eggshell kind of you're walking on eggshells, nothing you're doing is kind of right, but you don't know what you're doing wrong. Uh, and then I was doing something wrong clearly, but they were, it was unclear within the scope of an argument what I was defending myself against. So it would shift from uh, a rumor he had heard that I was with um, my a friend or I had been photographed standing too close to a male person that was a person I'd have a, an, I had had something with, and I was lying to him about. And the, it would be egg, it would be eggshells, accusations, accusations, and then he would explode. Um, it started with throwing things, um, uh, destroying the property, and screaming at me. I remember the screaming at me was the worst because I kind of always felt like I had done. You know, I had to defend myself. I had to tell him I, so he didn't think these things were true. And sometimes, you know, I, he would shift accusations. While I'm trying to dispel one accusation, he'd start another one. And um, nothing I could do to calm him down, it seemed like. I'd walk away, and that would make it worse. Um, I remember he, in my apartment in Orange, it would he would grab me by the hair or he'd grab me by the arm, face pull me into him, scream at me that way. He'd smash things around me. Then he would smash things very close to me. And then he would just hit me. And it started with slapping. Um, and it got to be like repetitive slaps where he'd hold me um, in a position and slap me multiple times um, in a row. Uh, then it would be you know, eventually I later would either push him off of me or I'd try to hit his hands away from me. I tried to, not in 2012 so much. At that time, I was mostly, um, my defense was, uh, I'd go some other place. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how to describe that. It was, I'd focus on something else. I'd stand up, look at him, try to stand up to him that way. Uh, later, I adopted other kind of strategies to deal with it, but at the time in 2012 it was he'd have this blowout and then he would leave disappear and he would i'd be committed to not talking to him i'm done with this relationship i can't take it anymore i said that so many times 
And then he'd come back, clean and sober, telling me he'd, he had a chip. He didn't have any chips, but he would say, I've, I've gone to meetings. I have a, I have a, a sober companion now. Um, I'm doing this program. I'm reading this. I'm doing this. And he was done with drugs and alcohol for good this time. And he come back in my life, and with the combination of him being sober and having gone through this horrible thing where I felt like my heart ripped out of my chest, you know, like a relationship ending is hard, I think, for anyone, but ending under that circumstance is really painful. And so when he'd come back, it would almost feel like a solve, a solution to that, and it would feel great, and we would be good again, and it would be he'd be extra nice and extra apologetic and extra loving and it would just then we'd be back in 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 the good bubble the warm glow and eventually it'd get bored and then I'd see him drinking again um, when I started to get upset noticing the pattern um, of the violence going with the the drinking and drugs then I then he started sneaking it so it became less clear and I'd have to look for clues as to what he was on, so I just knew how to react, you know? Uh, Johnny on speed is very different from Johnny on opiates. Uh, Johnny on opiates, very different from <sighs> Adderall and, 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 and cocaine Johnny, which is very different from Quaaludes Johnny. But I, I had to get good at paying attention to the different versions of him. Uh, 2012, I was in a... Um, I was in the beginning stages of this, just learning these patterns. I was just learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence. And did you confide in anyone about these issues you were having? I think she Objection can say. Objection hearsay? She, I think she can say if she told anybody. As long as she doesn't say what she said. Right, right. So did you, con did you tell anyone? Yes, I did. Who did you tell? I told my therapist. I told. I eventually told my mom. And let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Defendant's Exhibit 150. I'm sorry, 150. 150, 150. Your Honor, I'm going to object on hearsay.
why did you decide to confide in your mother about the issues you were having with Mr. Depp? I, th I think I, I felt safe talking to my mom because I knew that she understood these dynamics and she wouldn't judge me for staying with him, for loving him, even though um, this was happening and was happening to me. I knew she would understand. And when approximately did you start confiding in your mom about your issues with Mr. Depp and the physical abuse? Objection, hearsay, compound. I sustain as a compound. When did you start confiding in your mother about the abuse you were, were, were suffering at the hands of Mr. Depp? I, well, I was confiding in her from the very beginning about the abuse, the psychological abuse, the kind of control, the disappearing, the not knowing where he was, the then he'd come back and sometimes in the middle of the night, the constant accusations, like that sort of thing. I, I talked to her about probably from the very beginning. Um, the fact that I was secret, I had to hide. Um, I couldn't tell any of my friends that I was with him for a long time because he told me everyone would blame me for the split with him and his partner. So I had to kind of sneak around and kind of get brought to his house, typically in, in a secretive way. And then he'd come to mine in a secretive way. And it was just all very, you know, so very isolating. And uh, I, I confided with her at the very beginning on that sort of thing. And then later opened up to her about some of the violence. I did it gently. You know, um, first I just wanted to have someone to talk to about how scary it was. You know, he, his, the rage and the, the uncontrolled violence, the rage that this man had, and why Objection, it was Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. May we approach? Please? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take our 15-minute afternoon break, so please do not talk about the case or do any outside research. Okay, we'll see you soon. And Ms. Heard, just a reminder that now that you're on the stand, you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys, okay? Cool. All right, so we'll be back. Let's make it 3.45, okay? 3 Thank you. Thank you. 